Now, this afternoon um, is a little bit different um, from those that we've done perhaps up to now, because um, I don't think many people necessarily would just travel to, um, to the UK for food, although um, it has been known. Um, so these are some elements that will form a really important part of, um, of your clients' itineraries, because we want them to eat and drink well while they're here, whatever the style of, of food and drink that they enjoy and, and so on. And some of them are uh, more of an experience. Um, but we, uh, we're really pleased actually that um, we get such positive feedback about our recommendations, whether it's uh, for a stunning three-star Michelin starred uh, fine dining experience, through to the fabulous traditional pubs um, where where you can stop and have a have a lovely lunch and so on. So, um, food and drink an important bit. So we thought we'd share just um, just a little bit um, a little bit with you. But we always always love um, having to try out all of our recommendations, which is lots of fun, um, and then and then sharing them um, sharing them with you. So this afternoon we're focusing on the Chilterns. And in a later episode, um, we sent out the calendar, um, we'll focus on the best eating and drinking in the, in the Cotswolds. Um, so uh, we've split it up as, as one should when talking about um, eating and drinking into a, a bit of a menu. And during one of our um, Humphreys TVs at High Clear, Lady Carnarvon came out with the most fabulous um, expression that I thought was um, about this focus on sustainability and, um, and and eating good local produce and seasonal produce and uh, and she said the said the the field to table garden to glass um, which is actually at the heart of a lot of the the restaurants that that we recommend some not not so much but um, certainly the vineyards and so on that we're going to come on and talk about um, there's, uh, there's uh, uh, lots to try out, which is just wonderful. So we're going to have a look at a bit of fine dining, um, talk about some pubs and some specials and, um, and a bit of foraging. And we couldn't talk about eating in the Chilterns without mentioning afternoon tea. So we will come on, come on and talk about, um, about that. Um, the Chilterns, um, if you imagine you've got um, London here and the Chilterns sort of spreads down from sort of northwest um, and down the west side so it's most most of it is accessible by within an hour or so of, of London um, and there are some really beautiful opportunities to um, to eat and um, I just wanted to share that across three towns all within um, a, a maximum of 50 minutes from London so in those three small towns are 12 Michelin stars um, and uh, I'm sure you're aware I mean to to be awarded one Michelin star is um, an accolade that most restaurants would dream of um, but there are two three starred uh, three Michelin starred restaurants in the same tiny tiny village just next to Windsor a uh, little village called Bray and uh, the Fat Duck and the Waterside both have three stars, uh, which is um, a sign of true gastronomic excellence, I guess one, uh, one could say. But there are all sorts of, of opportunities and there's a, a great emphasis, as I say, on, on the sort of sustainable side, which is, which is wonderful. So I just wanted to share um, a, a few of our favorites and, and the different styles will suit, um, suit different people. Um, the fat duck is is quite extraordinary. It has, as I say, three stars, and it is a performance. Um, it is something that um, I very much doubt any of your clients would have experienced anywhere else. They only have th 30 covers in the restaurant, so they can only seat 30 at a time, but they have 80 members of staff, ranging from obviously the chefs and so on but um, all of the front of house staff as well. So the attention to detail is quite phenomenal. And what, um, uh, what Heston Blumenthal does is um, creates a theme um, as you go through, the, um, uh, through your courses. So the one just before lockdown 
was a childhood visit to the seaside. And so he created um, this sort of mock turtle soup and all of the different aspects of a potential childhood trip to the seaside. But it is theatre. I mean, it's, it, there are things um, that uh, sort of steam and, and Lord knows what that, that comes out. And I'm not really doing it justice, but it is quite incredible. 17 courses uh, uh, normally takes three three to four hours it's not really something you want to rush not surprisingly with a few amuse-bouche in between um so if you've got clients who are quite experimental and love trying trying new things the fat duck is quite extraordinary um we are very lucky we can normally um get um get tables because the bookings open i think it's sort of three to four months before and I'm usually snapped up within about half an hour, but um, we've got some good friends over at the front door, so we can normally sneak sneak your clients in, which is uh, which is just just wonderful. And this is an example of the type of theatre that they uh, that they produce. So at the end of a day at the seaside, it's time for bed. So how well, how better to share that then put some meringues on a pillow and make it go round and round it's quite it is quite extraordinary and um you don't forget it that's that's for sure now in the same village just um a very short distance away you couldn't get anything much more different i think than the fat duck the waterside um founded by the rue family um is just unashamedly french it's um, utterly exquisite and um, is a, a, a really special dining experience. Again, three Michelin stars, um, so the food is, is stunning. But it's very French in style, it's very seasonal, um, and so the menu changes um, a, lot more, um, a lot more regularly. And Alain Roux, as a master patisserie, patissier, um uh arguably um and obviously it's all subjective but it has been said serve the best desserts in the country so um that's probably just worth going for in in itself and the wonderful thing about the waterside is that um you can get there by boat so if you have clients staying um either in windsor um, or staying at Clifton House, Monkey Island, the, the new hotel just outside Bray. Um, as you can sort of, you can see a little bit of the picture there. Um, we would um, uh, show for them by luxury river launch um, to the mooring at, at, the, uh, at the waterside. Uh, your clients can sit outside, choose from the menu and, um, and then go inside and sample their fabulous food. So it's a, it's a very special experience at, um, at, uh, at the waterside. And here's a great um, image that you can see a lot more clearly um, when, uh, what happens when you turn, turn up by boat and sit in the setting sun and, uh, and choose what you'd like to eat. Now, something that's happened in the UK quite a bit is um, chefs choosing almost a location um, and setting up various dining options in that location. Now we're rather lucky that Marlow, which is a beautiful little market town, again on the river, is about five miles down the road from here and Tom Kerridge has uh, set up residence in, in Marlow. Now the hand and flowers is absolutely beautiful. One of the few Michelin starred sort of pub style dining. It's very different again from the Fat Duck and the Waterside. Um, it's a lot more relaxed and he may serve some good old pub classics, but they're served with a Michelin starred style and, and flavor. So uh, they're, they're really quite different. But um, Tom Kerridge also has, has really taken this um, idea that we're getting over here a lot more of a restaurant with rooms. So instead of staying at a beautiful hotel like Clifton or Coward Park that have lovely restaurants, the starting point is the restaurant and the food and the, and the creativity. Um, and they've got some rather lovely rooms that you can stay in and, and enjoy. And Ma, um, the Hand and Flowers is exactly that. They have some beautiful little um, sort of cottagey style rooms. Um, and if you've got clients who 
because we certainly ha have uh, clients who say that they don't want to be in a big country house hotel in a big estate in the middle of nowhere. They, they want to be able to walk out of the door and be part of a little sort of little bit of a bustling town or, or a part, part of all of that. And the Hand and Flowers offers that perfectly. Um, they, can, they can step outside and, um, and be part of this, this little, little town, which is beautiful. And then go and sample some world of fabulous dining, which is, uh, which is just wonderful. He also fairly recently opened a coach, um, which again is, is this sort of slightly more pub style dining. The big difference with the coach is you can't make a reservation. So um, you turn up nice and early. And, and get stuck in. All the tables are quite close together and there's a real sort of buzzy type atmosphere. So if that's what your client's are looking for, the coach answers, um, answers the bill beautifully. And then we thought we would share another very different dining opportunity. And this is something we understand is increasingly popular um, over on, on your side of the Atlantic and certainly is, is very popular over here and is the opportunity to go sourcing some fabulously um, uh, wild growing ingredients for, um, uh, from, uh, from which you can create a, a wonderful lunch. So in the hands of a master forager, because um, obviously there are a few poisonous things out there, um, and so you'll be guided um, very safely by, um, well, our favourite is Matthew. Matthew does a, a truly wonderful job, and what he doesn't know about what's growing out there isn't, isn't worth knowing. So you can get, your guests will go exploring. It's a fabulous thing to do with a family as well for, um, for the kids to see where, where all of these wonderful ingredients are sourced. Um, normally does it do it on a, a, one of our wonderful private estates. And then we take the ingredients into uh, the kitchen where their private chef is waiting for them to produce the menu of their choice. Now, obviously we have a few put to one side just in case they're not uh, not su fully successful on the foraging um, but they can either get take part in the preparing of the food or sit and watch an expert at work um, and then sit down and um, truly dine in style with a great feeling of satisfaction because they've sourced a load of the a load of the ingredients and it's a really lovely day um, to um, to enjoy at one of the estates and we were talking about the uh, clay shooting and, and falconry and so on. After lunch, that's a lovely opportunity to, um, to sample one of those um, after, your, um, after your, your good lunch. Now, afternoon tea, uh, a quintessential afternoon tea, I think is fairly essential. Um, even if your clients have visited Britain lots of times, uh, tea, the teas do differ in style. There's a wonderful history to it. And the reason that uh, we have afternoon tea is um, thanks to uh, Anna, who was the seven du um, seventh Duchess of Bedford, uh, Bedford. And in the 1840s, she got a bit fed up with being hungry because lunch would be served sort of 12, 30, one o'clock. Uh, dinner was fashionably at that time served at about 8, 8.30. So that was a long old gap in between lunch and dinner. So she requested some rather lovely cakes and bread and butter and a cup of tea to be served at about four o'clock in the afternoon. And this caught on really quickly. And soon all of the fashionable houses across the country were serving afternoon tea. Um, always between four and five. It got really glamorous in about the 1880s um, and the ladies would get, up, get dressed up, full ball gown, the whole, the whole shebang. Um, it's obviously slightly less, less formal now, a bit more casual, um, but nonetheless, the, the, um, the choices of, of afternoon tea are just wonderful. You can stick with just the sweet or do the sweet and savoury, um, but the full afternoon tea is a meal in itself so um, you don't really need too much before before going to bed and the options are lovely from whether you go to a lovely little tea house in a in a village somewhere through to the splendor of of somewhere like Cliveden 
my partner and I went um, for on his birthday actually last at the end of last year and had the most fabulous afternoon at tea at Clifton. It took a long old time, but it felt right that it should take that long and, uh, and was very um, was thoroughly enjoyable. So it's just just wonderful. And now just a little bit of a focus on some of the some of the drinks we had to share. Uh, one of the most fabulous locations for um, a slightly explosive but um, uh, utterly delicious cocktail, which is uh, the Alchemist is in Oxford and is is quite new. Um, and if you want to, uh, your clients are looking for something a little bit dramatic at the start of their evening, then you know something like this is uh, is well worth well worth exploring. It's it's quite extraordinary how they do all of that. So that's um, that's an option. Now the other thing is um, the opportunity to visit one of the our local distillers. Um, there are some really fabulous opportunities. Um, the Bombay Sapphire that you may well be aware of. That um, uh, that distillery is just down in um, uh, just across the border into Hampshire, so so not very far away at all. Probably. Uh, 40, 45 minutes from, um, well, no, maybe about an hour from London, I, I would think. We've got our Mr. Hobbs gin, uh, which is um, a Henley, a good local Henley gin. Um, and uh, the, the Hobbs family own the boatyard in Henley, and uh, it's uh, fifth generation now um, who run, um, uh, Johnny Hobbs, who runs the, the boatyard now. And they found an old recipe um, that uh, goes back uh, a couple of generations in the family. So they're now making um, making gin. And um, the Wayfinder distillery is, is a, a bit of a new one up in up in uh, Beaconsfield. So as you can see, there are some different options of some uh, like Bombay Sapphire, far better established, has been around a long time, through to uh, Vista Hobbs, which is probably the, the newer kid on the block, I think. Um, and just to get a feel for the um, uh, what is produced locally, um, I know maybe the Chilterns west of London aren't your first thought when you think about uh, vineyards and award-winning wines and so on. But the chalk stream that runs through the Chilterns um, originates in the Champagne region, amazingly, um, goes obviously under the channel through Kent, which um, was probably the first area in, in Britain to really start establishing um, great vineyards. But that same chalk stream um, producing all of the, the all important type of soil runs up into the Chiltern Hills. And we're getting more and more vineyards opening up around this area, which is just beautiful. Um, they are winning all sorts of awards, uh, making wines, sparkling wines. There's a fabulous sparkling wine vineyard um, just near Marlow. And uh, one of our favorites is uh, the Chilton Valley um, vineyard, which is just, just um, a few miles away in, in Hambledon. And you'll see some video footage in, in a bit. And we also have some fantastic breweries, um, these little microbreweries who um, produce uh, rather special, uh, special beers and lagers. I have to admit, not being the biggest beer drinker on the planet, um, but those who know and those who love it uh, reliably inform us that, um, that they are absolutely superb. And programs like um, um, Agatha Christie's Marple and Midsummer Murders and those sorts of things use a lot of these microbreweries to do um, to do some filming, and this is the fabulous shop in uh, the Chilton Valley uh, vineyard, and they they do um, uh, they've got an award-winning liqueur and um, and all sorts. And let me show you just some of the video footage. So you can see when your your uh, clients turn up, they're welcome to a rather beautiful, very quintessentially English um, English setting, um, and the um, the processes are um, are quite fascinating actually. It's all obviously on quite a small scale, um, but the um, 
uh, Don, who now runs this family vineyard, is very proud that their the first vintage their first vintage uh, was produced in the year of his his birth. So he and his wife now um, now run it. And uh, as you can see, there's a, a fabulous selection. And your clients would receive a beautiful uh, gift box at, at the end of their visit. Um, and there's and that's the, um, the the tasting room to really sample all of their wonderful wares, which is uh, which is glorious. So obviously the food and drink, we're not going to give you a whole um, a whole itinerary, but this will give you a a feel for a foraging and um, and dining day. So we will include that in in what we what we send through to you, um, and they can obviously um, amend the times and so on. But it's a a fabulous way of getting up close and personal with uh, the wonders of Mother Nature, which is uh, which is just great. Oh, and one of the estates. If you've got um, a client who really quite fancies going truffle hunting. Um, one of the most beautiful estates, which is probably about um, an hour and 15 minutes from London, is the Wormsley estate um, that was originally bought um, by um, Paul Getty, is now obviously one of your um, uh, uh, very well-known, um, I don't know what to call him, businessman, I suppose, um, and is now run by Mark, his son. And Wormsley is a, a beautiful estate. Uh, Garsington Opera takes place there over the summer, which is a beautiful outdoor season of, of opera. But they have truffles. So um, if your clients are interested, we can send them off truffling, truffle hunting to, um, to the Wormsley estate, which is, is just lovely. Now, when we send you the um, uh, all of the follow up information, we'll attach the link um, to our episode of Humphreys TV at the Chiltern Valley um, Vineyard, which is, is just lovely. And also all of the links to the restaurants and so on, um, and some of our favorite favorite pubs that, um, that, that we've mentioned. But um, whatever your style of eating and drinking your clients um, prefer, then uh, there's something for everybody, which is, is, is just, just wonderful. So that's our little exploration of um, food and drink in Chilton. Can I answer any any questions? Have we? Uh, have I missed any out, um, Lisa, that you can think of where that our our clients have particularly enjoyed? Your muted at the moment not that i can think of um any possibly the manoir ah lord yes i didn't talk about le manoir very good point um uh le manoir is the most beautiful hotel north of um oxford um established by raymond blanc who is obviously an, an incredibly well-known chef and it's one of those places that you go for um, a, a truly incredible dining experience and to do just an overnight stay there um, really adds to the whole um, uh, the, the, the whole experience um, they have they they very proudly source um, a huge number of their ingredients locally um, and it's it's very traditional it's surrounded the hotel is surrounded by the most beautiful gardens um, so it's it's a very special place to go. They also have one of the best cookery schools in the country. Um, and so again, if you've got some real foodie foodie type clients, then um, uh, Le Manoir will be will, should be pretty high high on their list. And we'll share with you um, in a couple of weeks. They do the most fabulous Christmas um, uh, experiences that are, are, are really really special. So we'll share a bit more information with you about that in, in a couple of weeks. Thanks for that. Is there anything else that we can we can answer? Okay, so hopefully that has whetted your appetite and you're all looking forward to, um, well, um, I guess lunch or, or supper, depending, on, uh, depending on, on where you are. But a huge thank you for joining us. 
On um, Monday, we are visiting the stunning city of Oxford. Um, it is such a, a magical place with the, the history and the Harry Potter associations and, and all sorts of things. We're also going to be joined on Monday um, by a lady who is responsible for looking after the two, in our humble opinion, the two best hotels in Oxford, the Old Bank and the Old Parsonage. And we're going to share just um, a little bit about where your, um, uh, where your clients can stay and what they can enjoy while, while they're there. So um, it's, um, uh, it's Oxford on Monday and then, um, oh, we're going, we're going equestrian on Wednesday. So a bit of polo and horse riding and all sorts of fabulous equestrian experiences on Wednesday. So thank you so much. Oh, we've got one comment. Apparently we have made someone very hungry and looking forward to, thank you, Jackie. <laughs> You're looking forward to your lunch. I hope it lives up to expectations. Um, Doubt it. Sorry? I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. It's lovely to see you. Have a wonderful, uh, safe and healthy weekend. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on Monday. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Take care. Keep safe. Thank you. Bye bye. You too.